Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. Need more when you get to the junction. Pickle Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. And that's Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petty Court Junction. <laughs> Get a load of my newest gold mine. <laughs> How about that? Well, that was like a personally conducted tour. We've already climbed all over that thing. Oh. How about two for the price of one? Hey, that sounds like a bargain. Quite <laughs> a bargain. We've seen that thing every day for two weeks. Everybody in this valley has seen it every day for two weeks. That's just the point. They've been viewing this stellar attraction free of charge. Now when they have to pay through the nose, we'll clean up. Uh, how many people do you figure have seen the plane since it crashed? About 400, more or less. And how many people in the valley? About 400, more or less. <laughs> Doesn't leave you many potential customers, does it? Are you forgetting the population explosion? <laughs> I doubt if the blast will come in time. Is <laughs> the plane Steve Elliott packed up? Oh, you know about her, huh? See, Kate, this fellow wants to see it. Kind of step back and make way for a paying customer. I don't pay to see my own plane. Your plane? Right, the minute Steve Elliott misses a payment. My card, sir. Cash and carry, credit company. <laughs> cash and carry? That's right. Don't come up with the cash, we carry it away. <laughs> Where is Mr. Elliot? Oh, oh, he's up at the hotel. I'll call him. Hey! No, no, Uncle Joe, I'll, I'll go get him. Oh, it's no trouble. I can call him. Hey! I gotta talk to you. Hi, Mr. Stradley. You're just in time to help me with some begging. I'm asking the finance company for an extension. Would you do it right now, but you just say the price of a postage stamp. Right. Mr. Mr. Sharp to see you. Oh. Is he in a good mood? Well, Never mind answering. I don't think he knows what a good mood is. Mom, Steve just barely has enough money to fix his plane. If he has to make his monthly payment, he won't even have that. Oh, I figured there was some trouble. How did you get in a spot like that? Forgot to allow for a crack up in my budget. What do I do now? Well, uh, we could play on his sympathy. I don't think he has any of that. Everybody has sympathy. It's only human. That's where he may not qualify. <laughs> well, they can't rule you out for trying. Now, Billy Joe, you go get your sisters. Steve, you go on up to your room because we have work to do. This here is what's known as a propeller. Well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> and a lot better than cat babies. Give us a good old propeller, us fellas used to say back in WW1. That was a big war, you know. Well, for your information, they didn't even have jet planes in WW1. Um, well, that's one of the main reasons that fellas used to say, give us a good old propeller. <laughs> well, how long does it take her to get him? Oh, no time at all. All right, I'll just mosey around. Hey, did I ever tell you about my experiences in the Lafayette Escadrille? No. Good. Nice long story. <laughs> Pretty exciting, I can tell you. I flew with the best of them, Buddy Rogers, Richard Arlen. Buddy Rogers and Richard Arlen are movie stars. <laughs> oh, well... After the war, they had to take up another line of work. Joe, Mom says you better bring Mr. Sharp up to the hotel. Yeah, why? Well, uh, because it's easier. Well, why is it easier for me to go up to the hotel? Well, uh, because after you're through talking and, and you're ready to leave, it'll be all downhill. <laughs> hey, are you related to him? Uh, Monique. <laughs> the figures. <laughs> Where's the money? <laughs> I, I didn't mean that, but... 
Now, you want your money, don't you? That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you want to pay him, don't you, Steve? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> he can't talk. Okay. Why don't you blink your eyes? Blink once for yes and twice for no. Understand? That's very good. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> now, do you have the money to make the payment? Madam, I'm going to have to have a much better blink than that. Maybe he only has half the money. I'll take After over all, the half the blink is better than none. <laughs> Elliot, you did intend to make the payment before the plane crashed, right? Give it to me. No? Uh-huh. You see, look. Look how quickly you're catching on to the game. And look at the lousy answers I'm getting. Maybe he, uh, maybe he wants to use the money to fix the plane, right, Steve? And then he'll be happy to pay you after the plane is fixed, huh, Steve? <laughs> See how sincere. And what am I supposed to tell the home office when I walk in empty-handed? That he promised to pay with a sincere blink? <laughs> <laughs> for this dramatic change. Miracle drugs? <laughs> Very good. Good thinking. And by that same miracle, I'll take my payment now. In full. <laughs> See what it'll take to fix it. But you don't have any money. Well, I've done a lot with bailing wire before. Maybe I can do it again. Is that safe? Sure. As long as you can keep her in the air. Did you hear that? He actually thrives on danger. Uh -huh. He is sort of romantic. Kind of like Ronald Coleman. Who? <laughs> Ronald. Oh, I forget it. Make it Van Johnson. <laughs> Stop being so young. <laughs> Mom, can't we do something to help Steve? Such as? Like coming up with an idea to raise some money. That's a problem that's been troubling me all my life. You hear somebody mention raising money? Stop staring at me. Do I watch you when you eat? <laughs> Uncle Joe, Steve is just desperate for money to rebuild his plane. If he has to settle for a makeshift job, I just know he'll crash again. Now, now, don't get tears in my pie. <laughs> raising money needs to stop. Remember when Newt Kylie's crop failed and I put on the charity barbecue for him? Raised over $40? Who backed into the barbecue and burned down his barn? Well, yeah. I covered that with a raffle. <laughs> Stop your begging. I'm thinking. Uncle Joe, he's telling us an idea. We'll pass the hat. Hey, that's a great idea. Show off, mongrel. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea I was coming up with. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I just know Steve isn't the kind of fellow who accepts charity. You're right, Billy Joe. See, it ain't gonna work. He doesn't do anything about charity. As soon as Steve has his plane fixed again, he'll start making money and pay back every cent. Now you're talking, Steve. 
That's a thought I've just coming up with. You're so smart, why didn't you think of that? <laughs> Somebody asks a big favor, it turns out to be something you don't want to do. What was the favor? You wouldn't want to do it. See? <laughs> Actually, I'm the one that should get to ask the favor anyhow. After all, I'm the one who's always admired you two more than anybody. Right, Bobby Joe? All right. What did you say? What wrong? I suppose you've admired them more than I have? Oh, absolutely. I've always said I admire them more than anybody. Wait a minute. I'm the one who's always admired them more than anybody. Well, what was the favor? Have you ever said right out that you admired the fine, strong look of Floyd's profile and the raw courage of Charlie's firm hand on the throttle? What was the favor? Certainly I have. What was the favor? Well, I'm the one who's always said that. What was the favor? I said it a hundred times. Well, I said it two hundred times. Well, I said it three hundred times. What was the favor? I said it so many times I can't even tell you. No! That's better. What was the favor? Oh, you wouldn't want to do it anyhow. You would so, too. Name it and you got it. Put a contribution box on the cannonball for money to fix Steve's plane? Okay. <laughs> Boy, Smoot, you just promised to help an airman. I did? I did. <laughs> Us. Railroaders, born and bred, too. Helping our bitterest rival. What can we do? We can't do nothing. We promised. Casey Jones, forgive us. Hi, Ben. How are you doing? Hi, Joe. Nice crop of apples you brought in here. Yeah, and I like to keep them out. <laughs> oh, thanks. Hey, there's a bruise on this one. You know, some of the best apples I ever had had bruises on <laughs> Hey, Ben, you know that young fellow Steve Crest is playing up the Shady Rest? Yeah. He's kind of in a spot getting it fixed. Me and Kate and the girls are taking donations to kind of help out. Sorry, Joe. I've got too many places for my money to go now. Hey, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> so, that's it. You two work together. A couple of apple nappers. Watch our donation, Ben. Why come to me? You and your accomplice could go to a bank and make a killing. <laughs> I'll level with you. You make a sizable donation, I'll let you in on one of the biggest things that ever hit this valley. Carson Elliott Air Freight Enterprises. What do I need with the Carson Elliott Air Freight Enterprises? It's a modern way of merchandising. Ship your apples by plane. For your information, I ship my apples to Pixley by the Cannon Hall, and it only takes 40 minutes. That's just the point. You ship them with the Carson Elliott Air Freight Service, you get them there in 20 minutes, fresh. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm happy the way I'm operating now. That's the trouble with you, Ben. You won't hold still for progress. Do you know they ship lobsters from Maine on the airlines? Lobsters? What they do, run out of people? <laughs> Why not try to put across it? I suppose the lobsters fly first class and the crawdads fly second class. <laughs> yeah. Ben, I got a sneaking feeling that you're making light of this corporation of mine. Well, why shouldn't I? You're always coming up with great plans, but you never make nothing of them. Oh, yeah? Well, I got news for you, Ben Miller. 
We've already got a runway, a hangar, a flight tower, and a personnel building. Where? On the plans I'm drawing up. <laughs> Come to me when you've got something concrete, which will be never. Which is where you're wrong. I've got the first installations completed right here now. Well, what is it? A windsock. <laughs> here, Joe. My contribution. A dollar? Thanks, Ben. Bought my persuasive power as long as you could and finally had to give in, huh? Well, I give it to you because your dog saved me from spoiling this whole basket when he spotted this rotten apple. Good dog. <laughs> okay, I'll give you credit when I report to Kate. <laughs> the windsock up too, you know. <laughs> You've heard of going over the top? We're barely making it under the bottom. Well, look, Mom, tomorrow we'll really make a concerted drive. We'll start out early and we'll... Well, what's wrong? Tomorrow's Sunday. But, Mom, this is for a good cause. So is going to church. Your mom's right, kids. We can put this thing across without giving up the Sabbath to do it. Hey, Kate, maybe the Reverend Jones will come up with a week's sermon. The collections will be light. The folks will have extra money in their jeans Monday when we hit them and we'll... <laughs> don't, don't get the idea that I'm wishing the Reverend bad luck. Even Willie Mays has an off day now and then. that you get it fixed very soon. I thought we were hoping you'd give that sermon today. A sermon? It wasn't any good? It was too good. We were hoping you'd come up light. You gave the devil such a whack and I even dropped an extra quarter in the collection plate myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps I was inspired by this young man's singing. It was excellent. I understand there's a campaign afoot to, to help you to get your machine together. Yes, we're going to do it, too. We're going to hit that line tomorrow. We're going to hit it hard. Tomorrow? What's the matter with today? It's Sunday. Well, you know of a better day on which to start good deeds? Here. I'd like to help hit that line. Well, thank you, Reverend. The wife and I like the young fella sings so much, we'd like to add another five spot. Oh, Here you go, Kate. Yeah. Maybe you can get him to come over and sing to Bessie. I'd do more good in your talking. <laughs> Everybody join in. I'll put your lend me your hat. Here, you hold this. It was your idea in the first place. <laughs> Going over the top, boy. What do you say? I'm very, very grateful. I hope to pay back every dime as soon as I get my plane working. Oh, you will. Don't worry. And Lloyd, Charlie, you're making a donation to help an airman? Well, as long as it's the Sabbath, we can let bygones be bygones. But don't you folks forget that there's such a thing as a train running in this valley. Remind them, Floyd. Wow. <laughs> find that out when I fly her. Anyway, thanks a lot for all your help. You're quite a gal, short stuff. Well, it looks like we got here just in time. All finished? All finished. Thanks to my good right arm here. You wouldn't believe how much help she's been. Why not? She works on the cannonball all the time. Yeah, she helps Ab fix the Douglas tractor every time it breaks down. And she got an A in shop for the past three years. A in shop? Yeah, she's a regular little homemaker. <laughs> well, Steve, we're glad you got the plane fixed, but we're going to be starting to see you leave. Well, thank you. You've all been pretty wonderful to me, and I'll never forget it. 
Well, shall we start her up? Short stop? Short stop? Hey, what's this? Nothing. Of course it's nothing. She's crying is all. My girls, don't cry. Don't cry. Watch it, Kate. You'll get the ribbon on the christening bottle all soggy. Christening bottle? We figured you wouldn't mind if we gave your plane a name instead of just numbers. We figured we'd call it the spirit of Hooterville if it's okay. Not just okay, perfect. Speaking for my plane, we're both honored. Atta boy. Go to it, Kate. Hey, what do I do? Well, you, you just step up and say, I hereby christen thee the spirit of Hooterville and whack her over the snout. I hereby christen thee the spirit of Hooterville. <laughs> I bet that's the part you need, too. <laughs> sort of, am I? You know something? I'm glad. Glad? What do you mean? Really? Well, here I was about to leave the finest people I've ever known. I must have been out of my skull. You mean you're staying? You bet I'm staying. If it's all right with you. Oh, it is. Oh, okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the lucky thing you broke that propeller of his. Uh-huh, wasn't it, though? What puzzles me is how you can break a propeller like that with a bottle of champagne. It wasn't easy, but, but it helps if you dump off the champagne and uh, fill the bottle with sand. <laughs> TV Westerns. Every Sunday, set a spell. Watch TV Land Goes West. Four hours of rarely seen Westerns from our ball. This Sunday, starting at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Right here on Naked Night's TV Land.